Hello there geographers and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video we'll be looking at how the gravity model can better predict the migration patterns of people and also trade between cities. So this video is actually going to be part one of a two-part series. This video is going to be looking at how the gravity model can be used to predict the migration and trade between cities. Part two is going to actually look at how the gravity model can be used to see what's going on with the location of different services within a settlement. Kind of similar to the central place theory that we covered earlier in the channel. Now, make sure you use your guided notes while watching these videos. You can find the guided notes in the description below. The guided notes go along with the video and it'll help you understand all the important information. The gravity model was created in 1931 and it tried to better predict the interactions that would happen between different cities. Now, this is based actually off Newton's gravity model, so it's pretty similar in a couple different areas. This model looks actually at distance and it's going to also look at the size of the cities. And what we can see is actually how much they're going to interact. The larger the city, the more pull factor it's going to have. Think of it actually, if we're connecting it actually back to gravity, like a planet. If you have a really large mass, it's going to have a greater pull. If we have a city with a lot of people in it, it's going to have more services. It's going to have more opportunities. It's going to have more economic gains and it's going to attract more people to it. At the same time, if we have a settlement that's smaller, it's going to have less money, less people, less businesses and services, and it will attract less people then. So this concept's important to understand. The other part of this is going to be the distance between. This is actually going to connect back to distance decay. The further something away is, the less it's going to interact. All these concepts are important to understand. So what we're going to do right now is actually get into the formula, because we can actually use this formula to better understand exactly the likelihood of interaction between two locations. And this is the important formula for this video for the gravity model. This is the formula that we're going to use for the gravity model. We're going to take the population of city 1 times the population of city 2 and divide it by distance squared. Now the distance is the distance between these two cities. Now what this is showing us is the likelihood of interaction between the two cities. The larger the population of the two cities, the more they will interact. And the closer they are, the more they'll interact as well. Now that doesn't mean that if two cities are far apart that they won't actually be able to interact a lot. Actually what we see is really large cities that are located around the world have a higher percentage chance of interacting because when people move they're normally going to go to areas with opportunities and those happen in larger cities. So that's important to understand. On the screen here you can see actually an illustration of the gravity model. Notice how we have three different circles. The circles are different cities. The size of the circle connects to actually the population size. Now we have arrows going between these circles. The arrows are showing us actually the interaction between the two. The larger that arrow is, the more they're going to interact. Notice how circle one and circle two are larger and they actually are interacting more with each other. Notice then how circle two and three actually don't interact a lot, even though they're closer than circles two and one. That's because of the distance and also because circle three is smaller. However, circle three is closer to the large circle one. And so they also interact more frequently than circle three and two. Now we can see this visually and really what it's just coming down to is if you're closer to a city, you're gonna interact with it more. And if that city's larger, you're gonna interact with it more. And again, that's because of the opportunity, the services, the different amounts of wealth and people that are located there. And that's the concept. That's really all this model is saying. This can show us different migration patterns. It can show us where trade's going to happen or where businesses might even relocate to. And the model is just showing that. And it's important for us to understand it. So while this can get confusing, we just have to break it down. And hopefully this is helping. Now on the screen right now, I have the different assumptions that this model makes in order for it to fully work. Now I'm not going to read through them all because I'm going to actually explain what's going on with these. So make sure to take notes on these. 
One of the things that we can see here is that these assumptions are not necessarily true. And in fact, the gravity model can struggle a little bit more current day because of changes in transportation and technology. People travel now for a variety of reasons. Sometimes people want to see parts of the world. Sometimes they want to visit family that are located in smaller towns or cities. And sometimes they want to relocate and actually where we're having counter urbanization occur away from larger populations. All of these would actually go against the gravity model. The gravity model is not perfect. It's not showing exactly where movement is going to happen. It's more just showing us the chance of interactions occurring. And again, that's important to understand here. And these assumptions are made so we can take this model and apply it to a variety of situations. No model, remember, is perfect. We're trying to summarize a lot of complex information into a simple model that we can apply for a variety of situations. Hopefully this video helped you better understand the gravity model and how it can help kind of predict the interactions between two different locations, both with people and also goods and services. Make sure to check out my next video, which is going to look at how the gravity model could actually try to identify locations for stores and other services within a city. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you for watching this video. If this video helped you out, please consider subscribing and don't forget to check out the other videos on the channel. Until next time, I'll see you online.